Tonight on Our News, a 21% increase in murders prompts a new task force and other crime-fighting initiatives. The top cop revealing the latest stats. Plus, the nearly $1 million cash seizure landing Bahamians in jail overseas. And later, delivering on a dream, the story of one Bahamian woman helping at-risk and foster children realize their dreams. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jamila Mizik. Murders are up by double digits in the latest police statistics revealed during a Rotary Club of Nassau meeting this afternoon. Our Italia Hall has a breakdown of the figures as the Commissioner of Police is pledging crime fighting efforts to stop the numbers from climbing to 100 before the end of the year. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander telling the Rotarians that there have been 85 murders so far this year, adding that it's a 21% increase compared to 2021. And when it comes to who is being killed, Fernander says there's a growing trend of men being executed after being released on bail. Based on our intel, we suspect that the suspects for that, it's viral the gangs. The police chief also says stolen vehicles are being used to carry out the deadly crimes. The type vehicles that are being targeted, if you have a Japanese vehicle, try put some tracker on it, uh, try put some alarm. As it relates to guns, while well, Fernando says police are working with their U.S. partners to resolve the issue. You will find that a weapon is purchased in the States, and we, we saw it purchased in the States today make its way here to New Providence in two days already used in the commission of a murder? Would you believe that? Now the commissioner says he and his team are working to address these issues and says that they will continue to beef up patrol. We have a strategy in place and the task force will be there. We will open that office and in a short order uh, you will see uh, what that is all about. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander says officers have uncovered a new trend as thieves are now removing or replacing VIN numbers from stolen vehicles. The news comes as police announced just a few weeks ago that investigators have uncovered a carjacking ring targeting Japanese vehicles. Today, the police commissioner says there have been 206 reports of stolen vehicles. He shares this example. Let me show you what happened. False. Win number, they put a false plate covering the original number. These are crafty in this. That is our team there now removing the false plate. They ran a false plate over the original number. So if you are not on your game, you would say, boy, there's nothing to it that vehicle is on. So you can imagine how many vehicles that are not recovered doing those armed robberies and were stolen. They are right out there relicensing on the road. Fernando says the solution is working closely with road traffic officials. You will see in the coming days, officers are up and about doing some things. You can imagine how many other vehicles out there with Ford's plate, with the original. <laughs> so we are on their game and somebody is making up Ford's documents <laughs> with the win number, the Ford's win number. So we are on to something big. And another alleged drowning is now under police investigation. Officers telling our news the latest incident involving a young boy who went swimming in the Sea Breeze Canal with a group of friends. Police press liaison Chief Superintendent Chris Lynn Skippings. Shortly after 3 p.m. today, our department received a call indicating that a young boy had, alleged, had allegedly drowned in waters in the Sea Breeze Canal. Our officers responded and confirmed the same. When they got on the scene, the teenager was still submerged in waters and had to be removed by officers from our Marine Support Unit. 
see Superintendent Skippings, who estimates the young boy to be around 13 or 14 years old, is tonight imploring parents to be more vigilant about their children's whereabouts during the summer, especially when plans involve swimming. We know that the summer is hot. Kids want to swim. Take them to the beach. Don't send them to the beach. Send them with someone who you know is responsible and someone who can swim. In the event that something happens, we don't end up losing one of our darlings. And so that's my plea yet again to the Bahamian people. Hot and hazy conditions continuing tonight as temperatures still hovering around the 90s. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with your first look at temperatures. Thanks, Jamila, and welcome everybody for our first look at weather on this warm Tuesday evening. Temperatures in the mid 80s, 87 right now outside the studios. Few clouds, it's hazy out there. Uh, you notice that earlier today, we are still have a little bit of a wind out there. East winds at 12 miles per hour, and you feel slight temperature, very warm, 90 degrees. Satellite view, quite around the area. That Saharan dust has invaded our area and drier mass in place. Limiting clouds and shower activity. We did have uh, some showers blow up just to the west of Andres. That's all associated with the tropical wave that passed us yesterday. And it's now moving in the Gulf of Mexico. That upper level disturbance is also moving in the Gulf. And that high pressure in the Atlantic and that Saharan dust will dominate our weather tonight through tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news for Bahamians land on the other side of the law in the Dominican Republic. We'll tell you why. Plus, the Prime Minister reveals government has not been following the law. We'll tell you what he plans to do about it. And one woman's dream to help at-risk youth, her big plans for the Bahamas and more. That's coming up when our news returns. Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell confirming that four Bahamian men are among five people reportedly arrested in the Dominican Republic. The Direction General de Aduana's website reporting a plane was piloted by two Bahamians and had five passengers on board. The other passenger was said to be a Haitian woman. The website also reporting that nearly $880,000 was seized. Minister Mitchell says officials are on the ground investigating. We've spent the morning and I gather that the Honorary Council for the Bahamas in the Dominican Republic confirms that there are Bahamians under arrest. He's trying to investigate what the particulars are. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. Meanwhile, a 22-year-old man who was on $30,000 bail while awaiting trial for a murder is back in prison, this time for gun and drug possession. Police arrested Darius Hall and three others on August 7th when they raided a home on 8th Street in Coconut Grove. While searching the home, officers say they found a .40 caliber pistol containing 13 rounds of ammunition and 8 pounds of drugs with a street value of $8,000. Hall, who was granted bail in April for the December 22, 2021 murder of David Gray in Montel Heights, pleaded guilty to possession of a prohibited weapon, ammunition and drugs with intent to supply. He was sentenced to two years imprisonment for the gun and one year for the ammunition, and those sentences will be served at the same time. Prosecutors intend to proceed with their case against the other three people who were in the home. In other news, a 59-year-old woman seen pushing a shopping cart while wearing a police uniform in a viral WhatsApp video has been remanded to Sandalin's rehabilitation for psychiatric evaluation. Yvonne Sargent pleaded not guilty to a charge of falsely pretending to be a police officer in her arraignment before acting Chief Magistrate Subusola Swain. Officers arrested Sergeant on Carmichael Road on August 5th after they allegedly saw her wearing a police uniform. Sergeant returns to court on October 3rd. 
And tragic news coming out of Grand Bahama today as another portion of the International Bazaar went up in flames this morning. The latest blaze is the latest in a string of fires to tear through the International Bazaar. In recent months, Italia Hall has the details. It was early Tuesday morning that our newsroom received reports of another fire in the International Bazaar located in Freeport. A huge portion of the once thriving shopping and entertainment center was fully engulfed in flames. Assistant Superintendent of Police and Fire Chief Eli Ariska describing the scene. The building was in a state of dis disrespect, uh, so which exasperated the, the fire and due to the high wind conditions that we expressed the experience. The fire chief confirming that the flames spread to all of the structures located in the west side of the International Bazaar. And as for what may have caused the fire... Now we know that uh, in past incidents, we had persons who would have come in the area because of the dilapidation and persons not being in the area, they would use it as means to now light copper away from the view of the, the public. So we're, 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 we're continuing leads in this, in this matter at this time. Ricardo Dean owns a wood carving business in the bazaar. He says the incident is unfortunate. I see nobody really trying to come and say clean up their stuff or try to fix their business. All it is a bunch of garbage in the bag there. Mm -hmm. So they're holding on to. They should get together and solve their difference. And as for whether or not businesses in that affected area by the fire can continue to operate, well, the fire chief had this to say. That would be an issue with the Port Authority and those licensing agents who would have to now inspect those buildings. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, the Prime Minister clarifies plans to recognize the anniversary of Hurricane Dorian. Plus, coming up in sports for tonight, John Quill Jones and the Connecticut Sun look to return to their winning ways as the regular season winds down. We'll also tell you the latest from the Bahamas Government Depot Metal Basketball Association and Rick Fox speaks to the Bahamian public about some things he perhaps thinks you might need to know. That's coming up in sports. But first, how the government plans to get back on track with public procurement laws. The details when our news returns. Welcome back. Prime Minister Philip Davis says his government has failed to follow public procurement laws that were passed and enacted under the former administration. But now he's saying government plans to bring amendments soon. Brittany McDermott reports. Not workable is how Prime Minister Philip Davis is describing the public procurement bill that was passed under the former Minister administration. While admitting the government hasn't followed that law, Davis says the act, which came into force on September 1st, 2021, is causing some issues. If we were to follow uh, the law as it is, we'll never be able to bring the relief to people, particularly you, you would have seen the challenges that we had at the hospital. If we were to follow that, we'd probably still be in the portals trying to address the issues. The legislation among other things is crafted to provide transparency when it comes to how government ministries, departments, and other agencies enter contracts and expend public money. The Act states that publication of procurement notes should be published in the Gazette or in one or more newspapers of wide circulation. Davis says the law doesn't allow for a quick reaction. We are an archipelago, and so whatever 
construct we have has to take into account our peculiar and particular circumstance. We have to be able to respond to the needs of our people almost immediately in some instances. While he supported the legislation in opposition, the PM committed to amending the legislation when they came into office, but that didn't happen. The Prime Minister says there is a more important question to be asked. One of the questions that Joe should be asking, and he should be asking that of the other side, is why would you have passed the bill in, in, when was it, in April, early in the year, and not put it, have it in effect until September? Why would they? Because they understood what they were doing was not workable. Now, according to the Prime Minister, the plan is to make amendments to that piece of legislation as soon as Parliament returns in September. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister clarifying the announcement of a celebration to commemorate the three-year anniversary of Hurricane Dorian. Last week, Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Clint Watson, told reporters the events will culminate with a concert featuring Grammy Award-winning artist C.C. Winans. Following that, the opposition claimed it was unclear about how the events would unfold. Today, the Prime Minister giving more details. It is not just a Nassau-centric matter. I think it's just that there's a headliner that wanted to come to do a pro, and they're coming to do a concert. And so he just, since they're here, he's just going to tie that event into what has been happening during that time. Because we are commemorating um, the, the Dorian, celebrating a Dorian thing, he just thought it fitting to perhaps tie that into it. The Prime Minister says Watson will provide more clarity at the next press briefing. While in opposition, the Progressive Liberal Party was critical of the Minutes administration's handling of the Dorian aftermath. Today, Dave is explaining what his government has done to assist Dorian survivors. First of all, we have, we've kept our social services program up by uh, providing assistance. We are now um, we are repairing homes now and building homes, and that's what's happening as we speak. And we're meeting their needs as they approach us. The Bahamas claims gold at the World Juniors as Anton Andrews gets it done in the 110 hurdles. Also, the Summer of Thunder basketball event continues at Kendall Isaac's gym. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks a lot, and welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. It's been a bit of an up-and-down season for John Paul Jones and the Connecticut Sun. They still remain in second place in the Eastern Conference, but looking for a little bit of consistency as the season winds down. Tonight, they will face off against the L.A. Sparks in Los Angeles, hoping to return to their winning ways. We'll tell you about that tomorrow. Meanwhile, though, we do have some other stuff coming in from the Bahamas Basketball Government Department Basketball Association. Let's take a look at some scores. Bahamas Government Departmental Basketball Association with action last night over at the Air Valley Gym. Taking a look at your scoreboard in from last night. Beat and Teach Clinic Sharks. They took on the BDOC squad. And it was BDOC getting the win. The Bahamas Department of Corrections. 76 to 71. Shaquille Brown. Uh, he had 24 points in a losing effort. Meanwhile, Cameron Cherry had 23 points. That came in the win for BDOC. Defense Force Mariners and the Panthers playing in the feature. Panthers rolling to the win. 100 to 82 ends up being your final score as Kemsey Silvestri led the winning charge with 33 points. Elway Pickstock, he had 31. That came in a losing cause for the Mariners. Action does continue later on this week. Meanwhile, Rick Fox, former L.A. Laker champion and, of course, former Boston Celtic back in the day, in town these days, and, well, had a little bit of an interview with one of our local reporters and had some interesting things to say about his career and things he's wanted to accomplish around home. As I see it is not only to continue to shine a light on those that are out there already uh, in the world representing all of us, which is a possibility, uh, giving our young men and women an example of what is possible. So for me, when I was growing up, that was Michael Thompson. Um, we see now Buddy Heal, DeAndre Ayton, we have other young men, track and field stars uh, that are all examples of uh, of what is possible on the sporting side, uh, but also having them understand uh, what sport can do for them beyond the field, beyond the track, beyond the moments of their brilliance athletically. They're, the sports will open the door to a whole world of possibility. And that is your look at sports here on this Tuesday. I'm Marcellus Hall, back to you. 
Still ahead on our news tonight, a Los Angeles-based foundation delivers on a dream in the Bahamas. Plus, Greg is back in the Weather Center with a look ahead. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome back to our news. Mostly sunny skies in the forecast. Greg is in the Weather Center with our extended outlook. Greg? Thanks again, Jamila, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. We are still watching the tropics. National Hurricane Center still watching an area out there in the open Atlantic. Uh, last evening was up to 40% chance for formation. It's now down to 30% low chance for formation over the next five days as it continues to move towards the west, being steered by an Atlantic high pressure system. A lot of dry air mass and Sahara dust to the north of that will keep the system at bay. Eventually, the high is going to back out towards the east. That will allow the system to turn more towards the uh, northwest. And we're going to continue to watch this. It should get near the uh, northern portion of the Leeward Islands by the end of the week. And as I mentioned, some upper level shearing and some dry Saharan dust will continue to inhibit development of the system over the next couple of days. Locally around our area, that upper level disturbance moving into the Gulf of Mexico, big blow up with some showers and thunderstorms associated with the tropical wave that actually moved through us last evening. It's now moving towards the west, south of western Cuba and into the Gulf of Mexico. That dry Saharan dust will continue to dominate our weather over the next several days. So we're looking at very dry conditions, hazy and hot, and we're asking you if you have any ailments or subject to this uh, dust, make sure you do protect yourself and stay indoors. Boating conditions for all areas tonight through tomorrow. Small craft caution in effect for you guys. Winds will be east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots. They will be gusting high at times across the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas running 4 to 7 feet and they will be higher in gusts. Tide is presently high, will be low at 12.54 in the morning. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your seven-day forecast, no real change in the forecast, dry conditions, maybe a stray shower or two in the forecast, but that Saharan dust will continue to be with us for at least Thursday before things clear out. We should see an uptick in some showers and some thunderstorm activity by the weekend. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe evening, everybody. In our final story tonight, one young woman is delivering on a dream to help at-risk and foster children know they are not alone. Founder of the Dream North Foundation, Nicole Linne, is bringing her vision to life this week with a literary arts tour and full day of activities for children living in foster homes in the Bahamas. Linne says she is excited to work with the children in the Bahamas and help to make their dreams come true with a day of painting, activities and reading get free gifts. I shipped all these gifts out here from the United States. So we'll be working together as a team and organizing all their gifts and then we'll deliver the other gifts um, to the children who will be off-site at visits. I'll go visit a few of those homes as well. It's, it's just a fun day that we just want to encourage them to read and to write and to be creative and to just meet one another, the children from different homes, and just know that they're not alone. Storytime with Dream North and Friends kicks off this Thursday at the Atlantis Resort. For more stories like this and all of today's top stories, visit our News Bahamas on Facebook. And thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Jamila Mizik. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.